Welcome to Shampoo and Booze, a podcast about Airbnb and short-term rentals at shampooandbooze.com. We are Ryan and Ashley, sisters who run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week, we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. Send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to cover topics you care about. We are also available to give design and listing advice for your Airbnb or short-term rental. Check out our services page at notperf.com to book a time with us. Okay, we're still in the same room. Here we are. Episode 71. All right. Wear and tear. We're talking about the wear and tear and what to expect. Yes. Now, there will always be wear and tear. Expect that. Don't think anything is going to stay perfect. (laughs) <laughs> you want it to. You want it to be brand new. You spent so much time on your Airbnb. It's gorgeous. It's clean. Stuff's going to get scratched. Stuff's going to get broken. Stuff's going to get stained. Ugh, it happens. So, okay, let, let's start out with stuff is going to get broken. Just two days ago. <laughs> you have a fresh story. I have a very fresh in my mind story. It's actually great. It's actually fine. Here's what happened. We have a little um, guest room, cottage, um, cabin on one of our properties. So it's like the third bedroom. It's got its own TV, an Apple TV. The Wi-Fi reaches out there so you can watch TV. The thing about TVs these days, we we just bought this TV a couple months ago. Thank goodness we got it on Craigslist. It was a nice, you know, Samsung 32 inch. It fits in there. It's nice. It's good quality. It's so lightweight. You can pick it up with three fingers. Like the thing weighs nothing, which is great, right? Our our guests had a, whatever a teenage daughter staying in there. They're in a hurry to go get dinner. She runs in to go get her purse or whatever, and she bumps it. You don't have to bump this thing like at all, and it flies off the dresser. I believe them. I'm like. I hear you. That TV weighs nothing. I mean, it shatters. It's not glass, but whatever. You turn it on, it's got this crazy... (laughs) The poor girl, the the mom called us and she's like, she cried all night. I'm like, it's not a big deal, right? It, It sucks. You know, of course, you're like, that sucks. Because we're going out of town the next day. They're there for like four more days. So I'm like, I have to replace this right now, somehow. The great thing about this story, though, honestly, these people were amazing guests and they were like, we're going to pay you for this. Like, send a thing through Airbnb. It's fine. We sent them a request. It was for $100. A new TV, 32 inches, a little more than that. But we were like, we'll split the difference. Like, it's so nice that you're helping us pay for this. Sent them a request for $100 and they paid it. That's a great story. Not all stories are like that. But the thing is... You know, my first reaction was like, oh, this sucks. But then they paid for it. And then I actually had an extra TV (laughs) in my storage. Um, It was actually the old TV that we replaced in there and I still had it. So I just replaced it with that, which was very helpful. So they had a new TV, but it was one of those things where we were like, this is actually an ideal situation where something broke. I had a backup, amazingly, and they're going to pay for it. What hotel can say that that it worked out like that for them, you know? Yeah, and I think what's great about it is it wasn't an essential item, you know? It's not like a pipe broke or, you know, it wasn't like suddenly the hot water heater went, you know? It was like a TV. An extra TV and an extra room. And so it's sort of like, you know, you hope for it to go that way. For right. sure. But you're like, you just have to expect things to break. And I mean, honestly, uh, the other thing too is like sometimes either renters don't know they broke something or it's a kid and nobody sit or, or an adult and nobody says anything. And then three renters down the line, they're like, oh, we turned the TV on and it's all messed up. You know, these people called us on the phone and told us, right? So that's like... But, but the other thing too is like, you just have to expect that. Like when we went over there to change out the TV, we were like, look, it's wear and tear. That stuff happens. I mean, honestly, that's a great reason why you buy a used TV <laughs> too, a good quality used TV. But you're like, 
it's not that it's bad. It's not brand new. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think we bought it for $100 mm-hmm. um, on Craigslist or something. So you just have to expect it. I mean, that's, that's like, the main thing. Expect wear and tear. And the other part of this example is that, you know, had they maybe not told you or, you know, they didn't know about it. Right. This is why it's so great to ha- either be in close communication yes. with your cleaners or, or your maintenance person. Your maintenance person or you're able to go kind of check things out after renters because you've had other stories where people did some major damage, knew about it and didn't, didn't tell say you. anything. So I'll get to that in a second because I don't want to like wait this episode yes. over like... The worst yes, stories. Yes, sure, the worst. Because yeah. worst stories is actually a whole other uh, episode. episode. But, you know, it's it's one of those those things where you're like, should we charge them for this? Now, we actually originally were not going to charge them because we're like, it was a mistake. They told us about it right away. They were really nice about it. They weren't crappy about it at all. She actually offered, and I'm like, that's actually really helpful to us that you would like help us replace this with a similar quality, like nicer TV. But there are things where, you know, um, wine glasses break, mugs break, plates break, you know, things break. Like if they are delicate, even if they're not delicate, they'll break. And, or, you know, they get a stain on a towel. Like I've read so many, you know, forums on Reddit or the Airbnb communities where people are like, there was a stain on a towel. Should I charge them for it? No. No. Absolutely not. Like, <laughs> they don't know they stained it. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Throw the towel away. And, or clean or And they'll it. never come back <laughs> yeah, if like, you're, like, charging people for towels. Right. So there's always the question, do you charge people? And, look, most most guests are super sweet about it. They'll be like, we broke a mug. Can we Venmo you? And I'm like, no, (laughs) because I have like 20 extra mugs in the back for my cleaners to grab. And they're like less than a dollar. Yeah. So yeah, you know, there's things like you have to sort of balance about when to charge people, uh, when and when not to. Um, And I think a majority of the time you are not, you might be pissed about it. You might be like, Dude, I just got these sheets and they are stained. Which happened, Which happened to, me. to you? Yep. I was like, I, I had just, just <laughs> bought a new duvet cover. It was used. Yes, it was used. You're right. Gently but used. it was new to me. Yes. And I was like psyched, you know. And sure enough, my first guest had put. I told you they put it in the washer and the and dryer. They dried it. And I was like. You're like, you permanently stained this. I was like, oh man. But what I was I was not gonna message them. I was We're not gonna you know, them. it's like I just those things are to be expected. And if those right. things are stressing you out and you feel like your margins are way too close to deal with that stuff, then maybe rethink Airbnb because things will get broken. Look, you you get I mean we talked about linens. I mean you'll get linens back with this like self-tanning foundation like stuff that like stains your skin yeah. that's literally what it's supposed to do right and then you know your towels are all orange and you're like this will not come off and you just have to be like you just have to eat it that's just what it is yeah. how much does a towel cost yeah i'm the worst at it jay jay's hilarious he's like he's saying that to me he's yes. like how much does it to just get rid of use it yes. as a cat bed you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah exactly. they're gonna love it yeah, right right <laughs> but, use it as rag right so like Part of it, too, is, um, you know, trying to be frugal but not cheap about your materials. You know, trying to use materials that don't get worn out or won't be permanently damaged or broken. You know, even even hardy materials like wood or metal, they're just going to get wear and tear. We have wood floors. They get scratched up. And... Luckily, they're vintage wood, so like scratches actually add look, to the patina. Yes, you're like this is patina, <laughs> right? But you know, trying to think of things like that where you're using fixtures, something something that Jay and I are always you know obsessing about is like fixtures for the sink or handles. Do not buy. You, you can buy inexpensive ones, but as long as they are materials, like at the farmhouse, I replaced all the antique. They were like these antique, like early 1900s, like I think they were steel or iron doorknobs. <laughs> you would touch them and your hands would smell bad because it was like old, weird, you know, like old metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, metal that's smell. So funny. 
So maybe they were cast iron. They might have been cast iron. Yeah. Where you're like, right. you're like, I oh. smell like metal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the problem with those talking about wear and tear was because they were the original doorknobs, the set screws were so worn out because mm-hmm. they were like over a hundred years old. <laughs> People would grab the doorknob and the knob would <laughs> come out. come out. And we, I think we got like three or four, um, you know, messages about it over, over like a year where people were like, I can't get into the room because the oh, doorknob no. fell off. So we'd have to go over there that's and hilarious. fix the doorknob. And finally Jay was like, first of all, we are replacing that doorknob with a new doorknob, but it's an antique style doorknob. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It looks like it's the original doorknob. Yes. So they're expensive. Um, I didn't want metal. You can get brass ones, yep. but they're super cheap. They're like literally two dollars, mm-hmm. and you're like that one's gonna break again. Yes, right. So I there's a place online called like antiquehousehardware.com or something like that. It's it's close to that, and you can buy the antique their porcelain doorknobs. I got they're like cobalt blue, and they have a spindle where you spin the doorknob onto it and then you put a set screw on it. So those things are tight. Oh, that's great. But they they cost twenty five dollars each, right? And I have at one house I have like five of them. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, I'm dropping some cash on some doorknobs. Right, right, right. But you're like, this doorknob should it's be not good. gonna break. It should be good forever. Yeah. It right. should be good the entire time I own this building, plus hopefully another generation, you know? But that's twenty five dollars, right? Yeah. But if that can save you from having to drive over there drive over. and fix the doorknob at nine o'clock at night that's on a just, Sunday. It's worth the $25. So it's yeah. that whole, yeah, you want to be frugal and you want to recycle and you want to use the original, whatever, but you don't want to be cheap. You have to fix that stuff. Um, because it gets worn out. I mean, there are other yeah, doorknobs. Oh my God. Like I've had to replace doorknobs because You know, on certain houses, people are coming in and out. Kids are coming in and out. All day long. All the time. Yep. And that just happens. Yep. Doorknobs, locks. I mean, the sink, all the sink hardware. I mean, those things, if if they can loosen, they will loosen. If people can touch it. um, And move it. And move it, it's going to get worn out. Be ready to replace it or be ready to, yeah, like get the best one. Because number one, people are touching it and they're, they don't want to be like, oh, this is cheap and it feels like it could break and it was the cheapest one at Home Depot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you're like, this thing costs just a little bit more than another one, but it will last a lifetime and it hopefully won't break. If it breaks, you're going to have to buy it like four times over. <laughs> you know, you keep buying it. And you have to fix it and spend that time. And yeah, it's like how if that stuff starts to add up. Right. And it changes the guest experience. Like if as a guest you're at a house and the doorknob is kind of like janky, you know, and then this other thing is weird, you know, it they start to add up in your mind of, of, your, cheap place. of your guest experience. And right. then you're kind of like, meh. Right. You're like, well, they cheaped out on this, that, and the other thing, and I noticed all these things. Yeah. It's like, they do. They add up in your mind as a guest. At least they do for people like us. Yeah. Like, we're kind of paying attention to those details. And I think people do pay attention. If they break something and they're like, that wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. This is a door handle. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Uh, The other thing, too, and this is kind of in, like, the maintenance territory, you're going to have to do repairs. Like we had a gutter on the farmhouse. I think it was a brand new gutter when we renovated. So we renovated in like 2012 or 13. There was just something about this gutter. It wasn't attached properly. It was too small. It was a it was on along one whole side of the house and this huge part of the roof and it was it started sagging in the middle and the problem with that is the water would get filled up on that section because it's not draining and it would go into the windows. So it would fall down the side of the house so it would come in the windows of the master bedroom Mm -hmm. and the kitchen below it. Mm -hmm. And we had renters say, it wasn't a big deal. They were like, but we wanted to let you know. They weren't like, oh, we're complaining. They were like, we just want to let you know. (laughs) There's water running down the side of the house and coming in the bedroom the window, window. you don't want that to happen right no. so so we so this year um after it's you know the springtime uh, after it was like the rainy season and we could get up there we replaced that whole gutter and like hired a company to like a, a commercial essentially sized gutter where we're like 
attach it as best you can, like industrial style. Because number one, uh, I don't want renters calling me saying there's water coming in the windows, which it shouldn't happen anyway, but it's the house is from the 1850s. So you're like, it got in some somewhere. Yes. If I can prevent that as much as possible. But it's hard because those things are expensive. But yes. you're like, if you just left that, that's going to rot your house away. <laughs> yeah. That's like water equals death damage. I, equals death. Yeah, I mean, right. water to a house is death. Yes. So there are things like that where you're like, it sucks. I have to replace that. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like owning properties, I mean, this is like landlord 101, right? Totally. Um, your roof better be solid. Your gutters better be solid. If it's not working and people are telling you. <laughs> they're not going to come back. They're not. They're, they're like, oh, remember the place where the. So what, what's great about that? Actually, but you were responsive, right? Like you were like, oh, my God, thank you so much. Like, here's the thing is if you all were not responsive, not dealing with it, didn't not fix it. grateful for the feedback, you know, like, oh my God, I didn't even know, you know, that that's different than a, like an absentee host, right? Right. Someone who's like living a million miles away, not responsive, you know, Doesn't clearly care. not taking care of details like that. That's different experience. We stayed in an Airbnb in Florida and, um, it was great because it was just Jay and I. It was like three bedrooms, two two full baths. You know, it was way more than we needed, but we had people coming over for work stuff. One of the toilets was completely not functioning at all. Like you flushed it, and it would just be like nothing happened. There was another bathroom. Thank God there was only two of us, not like a whole house of people that were like, no, you just have to use the master bathroom. Like, <laughs> like people are sleeping, and you're like, I have to use the master bathroom. Yeah. That sucked. That would have sucked, right? But so we messaged her and we were like, your toilet's like not really working. No response. No apology. I wasn't like, I'm not like, I'm asking back, demand my money back. You know, it wasn't anything like that. We were just like, we're hosts. So we would want to know this because this is very important. No response. Nothing. Didn't thank us. Didn't, you don't have to thank me, but didn't even say, I will have someone come look at that. A pronto. Yeah. Like it's a toilet. (laughs) Wow. So don't be that yeah, don't, don't be, that, be that, host. that host. Don't be that host. So part of it too is it's kind of like with that TV. Um, it is really hard sometimes when you're running Airbnbs and you can't get there right away. If you live nearby, fine, or you can't get your maintenance person and you can't replace that TV right away. Mm-hmm, you're just like, mm-hmm. this actually can't happen right now. Mm-hmm. But respond yes. and say, we are going to get to it as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. People don't need a giant story. They don't need a giant story and they actually depending on what it is, don't need you to fix it that second. If you can, do right. it. If not, say it'll be at this time or I'm sorry you have to check out tomorrow, but we're going to come by after. Thank you for letting us know. I'm sorry. Exactly. It was an inconvenience. Right. Or let me know when you're headed out of the house tomorrow for right. a hike or something and we'll come by then. That's what you all do a lot. Yeah. Yep. I, you know, I say not a big story because, you know, I've stayed places where, I just, I don't need all the information of about why it's what your way. schedule is, you know, like, well, I have to pick up my son from the thing <laughs> yeah, and then just, I, I, you know, I blah, 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 no, blah, blah, Don't blah, make blah, excuses. Blah. I mean, it's like, you, you don't need it's excuses. fine. It's no big deal. Yeah, just like just be clear, you know. be concise, be yeah. communicative. Like you can be right to the point. I, we don't need the whole story. Right, though. right. And so, you know, it is a balance of like, it sucks when things break. So, uh, you know, as humans, the immediate response is like, they better pay, you know, like, oh, you gotta like, you know, you get, you get defensive. Of course, it's your stuff. It's your like precious, you know, house you've spent time and money making perfect, I hope. But you just have to balance it out. I mean, Jay, Jay was funny because when that TV broke, these people were staying for like seven nights. He's like, they paid us enough money to buy a new TV. Yes. It is not a big, a exactly. small TV. Right, <laughs> right, you're right, like, right. It's not a big deal. They were super sweet to pay for it. But in the big scheme of things, it's like, it's not a big deal. Yeah. It's like, if you are renting at that level, it's totally manageable. Right. Right. Yeah. So keep it in mind. Keep, keep your perspective, keep your cool, uh, be professional. When people are like, we broke seven champagne flutes. Oops. You're like, a- you're like, cool. I'm going to go to Goodwill, find the nicest champagne flutes for 25 cents each, (laughs) clean them, and be like, 
there we go. <laughs> I literally have a box of champagne flutes now because I'm like, they will break. People had their wedding. They came back. They celebrated. They broke. <laughs> so are there times when you felt like charging someone was really justified? Or yes. like, because I, I feel like we talked about this line of like, yes, when to charge, when to not charge. And I, I feel like there are times when it's really clear. Yes. And both of those times were when immediately when my cleaner came in or or we came in one was us one was our cleaner there was something damaged that was bizarre uh, the guests never told us about it but we were like it was those guests because they just left and it wasn't like this last time they never said anything and when we took a photo because you need to take a photo for insurance purposes if you are going to claim either insurance or go through Airbnb and make a claim. Um, and it helps to have a timestamp. It helps to, like, there's information on your photo. Like, if you really are <laughs> investigating it, you're like, they left at this time. We were there 10 minutes later, and this was the damage. When we confronted those guests, we were like, hey, very nice. We noticed this thing is severely damaged, um, cannot be replaced, cannot be fixed, must be like literally replaced, meaning we have to throw it away. Mm -hmm. it, it can't be, I'm sorry, it can't be repaired. And they were like, oops, oh yeah, sorry about that. They did admit it. They weren't like, that wasn't us. So you're like, you're like, that oh, sucks. Okay. I'm totally charging you for yes, that. Right. It's, this is like several hundred dollars mm -hmm. of damage that you did to my house or my it was the other furniture. one was a piece of furniture, yep. a really nice piece of furniture that I was like, I was seriously bummed. I was like, really? You were our first, <laughs> it was the first renters at one of our houses at our um, like mountain view, like cabin. The hilarious thing was one of them paid right away. They were like, we're so sorry. Like, and they were rich kids anyway. We were like, you're you rich like, kids. Okay. I could tell. Yeah. You, you were like kids that were like, oh, whatever. We'll just like, whatever. And you're like, yeah, you need to pay for this. And they're like, okay. Pay. Yeah, no fight there. The second one, this will go in our, if we have a horror war stories episode, um, this woman would not pay me. Or she was like, I'll pay you half. And I'm like, but it doesn't cost half to get it repaired or replaced. <laughs> right, right. It costs fully what I'm charging you. Yes. Um, you did severe damage. It was one of my countertops. You didn't tell me about it. And you admitted you did it later. Those, I feel like those cases are so clear, and you know, like it wasn't a gray area. It wasn't a gray area. They knew they did it. They knew they didn't say anything. They hoped we wouldn't notice because they'd hope we were one of the Airbnbs where like that stuff goes unnoticed for years. And right. <laughs> and it's like, you just didn't, you didn't catch it. Yeah. I was like, oops, whatever. We don't know who did this. And then she's like, I don't know. It wasn't me. Yeah. Yeah. Which she didn't do. She was mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, we did that. And we were like, mm -hmm. cool. We're charging you $200 for that. Um, unfortunately the hard thing about Airbnb is like, I really had to like be on the phone with them. I talked to like three different agents. They like mm -hmm. tossed me around a bunch and then I did actually get paid back for it. It took, it took some like wrestling yes, <laughs> to right. do that. But I mean, out of the hundreds of people that has, I mean, at this point it's hundreds that's only happened. Like a, that's like literally so that's rare. two times. Yes. That's so two times rare. that I was like, ah, say I don't do this, but I'm going to charge you yes. because this is pretty egregious. Well, I feel like what you were saying before is like, you have to expect wear and tear yeah. unless it's egregious, unless it's like so obvious and so like expensive, you yeah. know, that's when I feel like it moves into that territory. Like I, I saw, um, I saw, I think it was on Reddit. There's an Airbnb subreddit, which is funny because it's hosts and guests. So it's always like this weird combo of like, Hosts being like, these people did this. And guests being like, these hosts are crazy, you know. But um, there was one where this lady came on and she had this like crazy glass coffee table that she was like, this is a $2,000 coffee table. And these people either left a scratch or cracked it or something. And everyone on the subreddit, it was guests and hosts, were like, don't put that in your Airbnb. <laughs> like, you have a I was custom just made. <laughs> about to say that. You have a, like, whatever, $3,000 custom artist made glass top um, coffee, coffee table. table. Like, you could put that in your house if you're like, that's cool. Do not put that. Like, expect, expect, expect it to get break. broken. <laughs> Actually, I remember you saying that Jay bought 
uh, he bought a French press. <laughs> that's a glass press. French press. It's gonna break. <laughs> and you were like, you were like, Jay, that's gonna break. And he was like, well, just try, you know? And it's like that moment where you're like, just expect it to break. Like, you can be happy that you put it in there for like the first few guests. You're like, that's cool. Like, it's cute. Looks great in the photos. Looks you know? great in the photos. <laughs> but don't, right. don't put your grandma's heirlooms right. in. Don't, unless you want them unless to Unless you're okay with them falling off the shelf yeah. or whatever. Like, people are mostly respectful, but accidents happen. So if you're putting stuff in your Airbnb, expect it like, to get damaged. Like, um, release your your like attachments to those things like it's so buddhist of you it, but it, it but yeah, it is right it is. like the the chair that got damaged that i'm like oh my god it was our first literally the first people that stayed in this house ruined this chair beautiful chair paid 300 dollars on craigslist for it jay was so attached to it he wanted it so bad perfect now it's his it's at our house <laughs> um totally like cannot be fixed you know, it was sad because we were like, oh, we spent so much money on that. Lesson learned. You know what? Yep. I'm not buying a $300 gorgeous leather, like, room and board, whatever. Not going to my rentals anymore. Right. And so this is this is that line between, you know, something that can take the wear and tear. Right. Something that looks nice. Right. Isn't going to break the bank. But doesn't feel like a dorm room. So this is this is that line we're constantly walking. Yes. You're constantly walking that line. Because yep. of course you want a gorgeous leather, you know, tobacco leather, soft glove leather. Yeah, right. Like, of course you want that in your rental. It makes your rental so high end. Will not last one one stay. <laughs> Didn't last one stay. It was like, okay. You know, and I do have other leather furniture that's that's been fine. And I've actually like got that like leather repair stuff where you like you like re dye the leather basically, and I'm like, great, it works every time. But you just figure those things out. But I I actually love that you say we're always walking that line where you're like, I don't want to buy a cheap chair from Walmart that's in like six months going to be like torn apart. But I don't want to buy the highest end thing because someone is going to spill coffee on it. Um, so like, how do you negotiate between that? And you just you just figure it out over time, you know? And actually, uh, we're going to talk about this in an episode about sourcing furniture. Right. So right. that is a, a huge part of how we think about our spaces is where do we source furniture? How do we think about it? So watch for that episode. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Don't overly charge your guests. Don't get mad at them. They're doing the best they can sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Shampoo and Booze at shampooandbooze.com. As usual, you can send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to cover the topics that you care about. Don't forget about our design and listing advice services. Head over to our services page at notperf.com to book your design advice session.